Welcome to the Big Picture Retirement Show, where you'll learn what it really takes to have a successful retirement. With over 20 years of experience, your host, Rick Rivera of Safeguard Investment Advisory Group has seen it all and is here to help you achieve your retirement dreams. This is the Big Picture Retirement Show. Welcome into the Big Picture Retirement Show with Rick Rivera. Rick is a partner at Safeguard Investment Advisory Group alongside Reed Abedin, Eddie Soda. Rick has over 20 years experience in the financial industry. We're going to put some of that financial history and experience to the test today. Our topic today is about retirement challenges for women. We know that both husband and wife, if they're married or they're single folks, there's widows and widowers and divorced people. But Rick and the, and the team will sit down with, with whoever they can help, obviously. But we're going to talk specifically about women and some of the challenges they face when it comes to retirement uh, on the program today. If you have any questions, you want to sit down and talk with Rick and the team at Safeguard, it's 800-700-1980, 800-700-1980. And of course, you can find out more about Rick and the team by going to the website, safeguardinvestment.com, safeguardinvestment.com. And Rick, because you're an expert on women, that's why we're going to talk about it today, right? Oh, yeah, a real expert. Is that what that's your wife specialty. says? You're an expert in this area? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So here's the deal. We know this is a fact, right? Women statistically outlive men by about six years, and that's if they're the same age. So if there's a five-year age difference already. Now, and you're not a big golf guy, all right? The U.S. Open was just in Los Angeles, by the way. Tommy Fleetwood was there. Tommy Fleetwood's from England, one of the top 20 players in the world. Tommy's wife is 22 years older than he is. So that kind of throws this out of play. But typically, women will outlive men by about six years. So a lot of wives, obviously, then would outlive their husbands in retirement. So that means for some, all of a sudden, now they're in charge of everything in the financial world. We know women in, are controlling more and more of assets today than ever before and getting a little bit you know, more working. It's not the old days of my grandparents you know, where – granddad would go out to work and grandma would stay at home and raise the kids. It's not right. that anymore so much. There's a lot of things moving and changing here, but it's still super important for women to have an idea about some of the challenges they might face in retirement. So let's start right there, Rick, with differences that you've noticed between how men and women approach retirement planning. So let's start with men. How do they, or what things do men tend to be concerned about in planning for retirement, would you say? So general, and I'm going to speak obviously from my personal experience and what I see in my uh, specific industry because I deal, I specialize in retirement planning. So, you know, generally when people come in uh, to see us for the first time and I'm talking directly to the men, usually, let's say most of the time they're the ones in charge of, uh, of the finances, I'm not saying always, but you know, most of the time they are, they come in and maybe they, um, from the workshop, there's a concept or something that I shared with people. They'll come in and they'll want to learn, I guess, hey, what is it that I don't know? Where can I enhance? Where can I improve my situation? Because they want to be a little bit more educated on, on enhancing what they're doing. Now, the other major concern is making sure that the wife is going to be okay. And I'm getting more and more of that especially nowadays, why I don't know, but I just, I, it just seems like that's a big thing that's coming in where they'll come in and they'll say, Hey, listen, you know what? Um, I did things a certain way for a period of time, but if my wife passed away, I'm not so worried about it, but if something happens to me, I'm concerned about her because she's not in charge of the finances. She doesn't even want to get her hands involved in it. So those are some of the bigger concerns. And, and generally, you know, sometimes the men happen to be a little bit more risky or like to take on a little bit more risk where the women are a little bit more conservative and the, the, the women are, uh, you know, put in their opinion, but again, they're not the ones handling the assets. And then they just kind of, you know, trust that the, that the man is doing the right thing for them. Okay. So yeah. the other side of that coin then would be, what are women more concerned about when it comes to retirement? Would you say? Okay. When it comes to the women that I'm seeing, I should probably rephrase that question a little bit and say, here are the things that they should be concerned with. Because many times, and here's why I'm saying that, because when they come in and see me for the first time, when we're asking them questions, a lot of times they'll say, you know, what they're concerned with is just making sure they're going to be okay when their husband pass away, make sure there's enough income and things like that. But they keep it very general. They really don't know specifics as to what, you know, 
um, they need to be concerned with. And this is where we help them. And this is where we can, you know, sit down with them and say, okay, yeah, you want to be okay, but what does that mean to you? And we can analyze the scenario and say, hey, let's first educate you on where you stand. So I think where, where they need to first um, be concerned is making sure they're educated on the current plan that they're in. Make sure they understand the basics. Once they understand how, how the basics is established, where the foundation is, now we can go to the next level and say, okay, if something happens to my husband, how do things change for me? And we say, okay, maybe we get a cut in social security income. Maybe we get a cut in pension. Maybe, you know, this scenario occurs. Maybe we need to worry about long-term care, whatever it is. And we show them, hey, here's the scenario. Okay, what is now the solution to address these shortfalls? So if God forbid something happens, I'm still going to be okay. And then what you do is you get educated on those solutions and not for them to be intimidated to learn. I'm not saying, and I know, you know, many people, you know, especially the one that doesn't handle the finances, there's a reason for it because they just don't want to deal with it. But what I'm saying is they should have a basic understanding. Again, they don't have to be able to draw the schematics of the engine but have a basic understanding. Hey, they know how to turn on the car. They know where the lights are. They know how to use the windshield wiper, where to put in the gas and get the car from point A to point B. That They just need to know the basics. So here's part of the deal. We appreciate you listening to the show today, but Rick has put this together for folks that want to learn more about retirement, more about some of the challenges that may be uh, ahead or maybe some of the areas that they haven't thought about. So all you have to do is text the word toolkit, T-O-O-L, kit, K-I-T, Toolkit, text the word toolkit to 951 667 4969. That's 951 667 4969. You'll get retirement guides from the team at Safeguard Investment Advisory Group. Reed Abedin also does a webinar, and it's just an abbreviated uh, webinar thing that they're going to send you. It's about 30 minutes, and it's really talking about the process and the planning that goes in and how they help their clients at Safeguard. So it's really for your information. Text the word toolkit if you'd like those retirement guides and to see Reed talk about retirement planning uh, for how they do it at Safeguard for their clients. It is text the word toolkit to 951 667 4969. 951 667 4969. There's no cost, there's no obligation, there's no pressure uh, for any of this. This is all for your information. Now, so when you think about the fact that we know women statistically, we know it's not all the time, but generally speaking, right? Women outlive men by about six years. So if that's the case, how does that fact come into play during the retirement planning you do for a married couple? Okay. How that fact comes into play because, you know, that one spouse is living longer than the other is number one income, as you know, we've discussed many times and making sure that income keeps up with inflation, making sure that we can make up a shortfall in case one spouse does pass away, how are we going to make up that shortfall in the most efficient manner possible? The other big thing that I'm I'm seeing a lot of lately, um, especially you know, let's just say that the, the, the woman, you know, obviously that the spouse, the husband passed away, the woman now says to me, "Hey, Rick, you know what? If something happens to me and I don't have my husband, the big concern of mine is long-term care. I don't want to be a burden on my kids because because if I don't have my husband to take care of me." You know, I don't want to be a burden on the kids. You know, what can I do in order to offset those types of costs? If, you know, maybe I need somebody to come into the house and do some of the heavy lifting that I don't want to do anymore. I just can't do anymore. Or God forbid, I I do need nursing care. You know, I really don't want to go into a facility. I'd rather have somebody come here in my home. So it's those types of things that we need to be concerned with. And not and not only that, but also taxes, because we know that tax bracket changes once we become single. And, and here's the thing, a lot of people think, well, you know what, if my income goes down, let's say I lose my spouse, income goes down, I become single, you know, uh, uh, taxes are actually gonna go down. In reality, in some cases, taxes actually go up because you're single, because you're losing a standard deduction, your marginal bracket automatically goes higher when you're single as opposed to being married. And the other thing that we got to take into consideration is that the thresholds for Social Security to be taxed are lower for a single person than they are for a married couple. And I even talk about this in the workshop where, you know, we have someone pass away, they lose income and taxes actually go up. So we need to make sure that those plans are in place. So that way, if God forbid spouse passes away, 
the wife is not, you know, hung out to dry. She's already has a plan in place. She doesn't need to panic. There's no surprises. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, and basically, you think about this. Then this is a stat from the Department of Labor, uh, and we're going to talk more about women in retirement when we come back. But here's a stat for you. I'll leave you with the Department of Labor says women age 65 or older are 43 percent more likely than men to live below below the poverty level, and about 65 percent of poor elderly people are women. That kind of goes back to what Rick was saying. We've got to have a plan. We've got to be prepared. What if? And if you'd like to sit down with Rick and the team at Safeguard and talk about this, this is obviously big stuff, super important. Uh, 800-700-1980 is the number to chat with Rick and the team at Safeguard. 800-700-1980. Everybody's situation is unique. Rick gets that. The team at Safeguard gets that. How can they help you? How can they put maybe some of that stress? Hey, I just want to make sure my spouse is okay if something happens to me. Let's figure that out. And Rick and the team are here to help you do just that. 800-700-1980. 800-700-1980. No cost, no obligation to chat with the team. 800-700-1980. Back with more of the Big Picture Retirement Show with Rick Rivera of Safeguard Investment Advisor Group right after this. You're listening to the Big Picture Retirement Show with Rick Rivera. For more information about Rick and the Safeguard Investment Advisory Group team, go to safeguardinvestment.com. While you're there, you can also download educational retirement guides and sign up for an upcoming seminar. That's safeguardinvestment.com. Now, back to the podcast. Welcome back to the Big Picture Retirement Show with Rick Rivera of Safeguard Investment Advisory Group. Always go to the website to learn more, safeguardinvestment.com. They put on workshops and seminars from time to time. That information is on the website as well. But you can find out about the team at Safeguard Investment Advisory Group at safeguardinvestment.com, safeguardinvestment.com. I'm Mark Kelly. Glad you're with us. Again, if you want to sit down and chat with Rick about anything that's on your mind, hey, can I retire? Well, when can I retire? Do I have enough? Will my money last as long as I do? Will my spouse be okay if something happens to me? It's 800-700-1980 to chat with Rick and the team. No cost for this. This is your opportunity to find out where you are. 800 700 1980. We're talking about the challenges that women kind of face in retirement more so than men. And typically, it's because if you go to a nursing home, I don't know, 70% of the the people that would be in that nursing home are women. So there are different challenges. Women are going to live longer than men. Statistically, it's it's six years, and that's if they're the same age. So, I mean, it's not abnormal, and not that it never happens the other way. But typically, I mean, the the husband will not live as long as his his wife. So that's kind of what we're talking about today. One of the things I wonder, because you've been doing this, Rick, for over 20 years, and I wonder if this has changed a little bit. I think back in the day, a financial advisor was just talk strictly to the man because he's the decision maker. He's controlling the money. That is slowly changing. But I know in your world, you're not just talking to them. You're talking to both, right? Husband and wife, if they come in, correct? Absolutely. We actually insist upon it because- you know, the type of planning that we do is a little bit different in the sense that we actually are establishing a relationship with our clients and we're working with them over a long period of time. It's not a product sale. The challenge is, is that some advisors out there, all they're interested in is they get the business. If the man signs on the dotted line, great. They got the business. If the, if the wife, you know, shows up, great. If she doesn't, you know, they don't care. Where with us, because we're establishing a relationship and actually, to be quite frank, when we're putting plans together, we want to not only know what the husband's concerns are, but we also want to know what the wife's concerns are too. And sometimes we find out there's actually differences and we have to help them come together on these things. So that way, not only the husband can sleep at night, but also the wife can sleep at night and she can see things in black and white. And and the big thing here is that it's so important, even if the wife does not want to get involved with the finances, it's important that she establishes a relationship with the advisor to see if she even has a connection with that person to make sure that she feels comfortable with that person. Because if something does happen uh, to their husband, that's the guy they're going to have to call. You know, and we're the ones that when if something happens, because we have a relationship with our clients, we actually help the wife. Hey, if there's forms that need to be filled out or things that need to be notarized or documents or recommendations that need to be given, you know, so that way they minimize taxes on inheritance or whatever it is or help the kids out. You know, God forbid, you know, mom or dad's in the hospital and and, and things need to be done. 
they need to establish a relationship with somebody that they feel comfortable with and that they trust. And the only way that's going to happen is if the wife is actually at some of those meetings and interacting with the advisor. And, and that's what we really specialize in. 800 700 1980 again, is the number to chat with the team at Safeguard. It's really important, I think, that, that both husband and wife or spouses that are on, on kind of on the same page don't have to be on the exact same page. You don't have to do everything you know, together all the 24-7 all the time when you get into retirement. But there are a lot of moving pieces here. And a lot of times, I think, women in the financial advisory world, they've kind of been forgotten. And I think that's that's past. But I think Rick brings a good point. There's still some advisors that will just basically say, hey, the husband's got to come in. I don't, the wife's not going to make any decisions. That's not the way it is anymore. I wanted to throw these out to you, some of these challenges. Now, I found this, gobankingrates.com, Rick, has a list of financial challenges women face in retirement. So I thought this would be kind of fun just to go through some of these and kind of get your take on some of these. I think some of these you'll agree with some. I'm not sure you will, uh, but I think most you probably will. Are you ready to tackle some of these? I'm just going to give you, throw you out, for example. Yeah. Gender yeah, pay, yeah, gender pay gap, for example, and I think it's getting better. But historically and really currently, women get paid less than men for the same job. I suppose. Do you still see that? Well, I don't know if this is going to be politically correct, but I didn't uh, uh, study on this. And uh, even when I was getting my master's degree, we even discussed this. There's, you know, a variety of things that go into it, but generally, no, I, I don't believe so much in the um, uh, gender pay gap scenario because there's just too many variables that go into that okay and you know let's face it if it was truly the scenario where you know you could pay a woman much less to do the same exact job as as a man why wouldn't all these executives just be hiring women you know yeah. i mean at the end of the day we're, we're in a capitalist society so i mean i could we, we could have a whole show just on that on why i'm i'm sure yeah back in the day sure but nowadays, I, I, it's not as extreme as what it used to be. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. And we know Fortune 500 companies have all kinds of women in the, you know, in the front office, if you will, into management. So things are different than they were certainly 20, 50 years ago, for sure, for my like my grandmother growing up. Uh, here's one that I think is kind of what you were talking about in the last segment. And it's that women kind of lack financial confidence. They tend to be more conservative and less confident about their financial experience and their expertise. That's kind of what you're saying in the first segment, isn't it? That is correct. That I do run into. And again, it's one of those things where they just don't want to deal with it. Or they're just like, hey, listen, you know what? Um, I don't know, maybe just because of lack of education or whatever. But that statement there is is very true. And I do run into that a lot. But then that's where we have to come in and say, hey, listen, you know what? I understand, you know, it's not your forte. I know this probably bores the hell out of you, but we just want to make sure that you have some basics just to give you some confidence. So that way, if God forbid something happens, you're not completely clueless. Right. So, All right. Yeah, I I'm agree gonna, with that. I'm going to give you one that I think that most of us would agree with, and that is caregiving responsibilities. Women are more likely than men to take time off from their career or work part time to care for a loved one. Uh, adult parents, we're, we're dealing with that now. I mean, it, I'm 63, so my mom's in an assisted living facility right now. Or the wife would stay home to raise the kids, so doesn't have the Social Security hours and the dollars and all of that. That certainly plays in, into this retirement planning, doesn't it? 100%. Matter of fact, I've seen in the past, uh, and you're right, women tend to do be uh, the caregivers. I've seen people destroy their retirements because of this for years they were taking care of a parent or or both their parents not working obviously mom and dad were supporting uh, uh, them and now they're not contributing to social security they're not contributing to 401ks they have no access i know most companies are doing away with pensions but you know they have none of these things so now mom and dad pass away and now you're way behind the eight ball so unfortunately this is something that you know we do see uh, from time to time. So in that regard, then, if the Department of Labor says 58% of long-term caregivers are female, if that is the case, how can you maybe, is it possible to help somebody catch back up with their savings? You know, honestly, it's super difficult. And the only thing that, that I can tell people or I should advise people, listen, I understand, you know, wanting to help 
you know, your parents and I understand, you know, wanting to do these things, but you got to have a game plan. If you're going to do it, you got to do it in a way where you're not going to kill yourself in the end. And sometimes it's just a scenario where they're just too far gone and there's not much that, that we can even do. There are some cases, but you know, if you are in that situation, I would definitely uh, uh, sit down and with an advisor and just say, Hey, if worst case scenario happens, you know, what can I do to prevent it? Because, you know, keep in mind, don't expect, you know, a big inheritance in a sense from your parents, because what if you have no idea how long they're going to live and they may need to spend down most of those assets. And then if you have other siblings, those assets are going to be split up amongst those other siblings. So what are you going to be left with? So these, these all things have to be uh, taken into consideration. So you think of this, let's say a married couple, uh, it doesn't matter which spouse, but one spouse passes away. Well, that means the lower of the two social securities goes away. The higher of the two social securities the surviving spouse keeps, but the lower goes away. Some or all of a pension could go away. We don't really know. Could be all, could be some. We don't know, but that's certainly a factor you got to think about. And the other one we talked about it is the fact that when you lose a spouse, that year of the spouse passing, you can file your taxes as married, file jointly. But the next year, the IRS says, nope, uh, sorry, you're not married anymore. You've got to file your taxes as a single person. Your taxes have gone up. So you may not have as much income. The bills aren't cut in half, Rick, right? I mean, it's not like everything gets cut in half when this happens. No, no. I mean, you know, it's funny because, you know, people think, oh, yeah, well, I won't spend as much. Well, unfortunately, you know, the property tax bill doesn't get cut in half. You can't call up the cable company and say, listen, you going to cut my cable bill in half. So a lot of the bills remain the same. And not to mention, we talked about inflation. And women live longer, so prices are continually go up. So it, it is a scenario that, unfortunately, some people try to address it when it's too late. Yeah. So don't be too late. Here's the deal. The bottom line, call the team, Rick Rivera and Safeguard Investment Advisor Group, 800-700-1980. Again, is the number. There's no cost to chat with him. He's here to help if he can. 800-700-1980. 800-700-1980. Rick, enjoy the rest of the weekend. We'll do it again next week. Thank you, sir. Firm offers insurance services. Safeguard Investment Advisory Group, LLC, is a registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities, or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Safeguard Investment Advisory Group, LLC, is not permitted to offer and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable. But accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Safeguard Investment Advisory Group, LLC. This radio show is a paid placement.